Hi guys, it is time for another image quality comparison. This time I want to see what the difference is between Panasonic 16 megapixel sensor, which is used in a lot of Lumix cameras, and the new 20 megapixel one from the G9. And since GH5S landed in my hands recently, I will add it in comparison also. I will start with simple stuff. These are 100% crops from raw files. I know there is difference in resolution. I will do the resizing magic a bit later, be patient. At lowest ISO values there is not much of a difference, but already at ISO 800 and 1600 GH5S appears a bit cleaner. G9 and GX80 look identical to my eyes. Now this is interesting. GH5S continues to dominate, but I'm surprised how little difference there is between 16 and 20 megapixel sensors in GX80 and G9. But this is far from over. G9 has an ace up its sleeve and it is called high resolution mode, which produces 80 megapixel images. First, I have resized all the images at 20 megapixels. G9 and GX80 look almost identical. GH5S is cleaner in terms of noise, but no fine details as is expected from low megapixel count. G9 high resolution image looks the best to me. In terms of noise it is as clean as GH5S, while has clearly more details than any other. Notice how it is the only image which can reproduce fine details in the binding on the Karel Chapek book, the one on the left. At ISO 1600, which is the highest available for high resolution mode, same story. High resolution image once again has least noise and most details preserved. The problem is, high resolution mode is usable only for stationary scenes like landscapes and a very good tripod must be used. Let's suppose you shoot sports and wildlife and find 10 megapixels to be enough. In such a case, G9's splendid IBIS and high resolution modes are useless and you need to keep shutter speed as high as possible and therefore use high ISO values. Is it better to buy G9 and then down sample to reduce noise or just shoot GH5S in native resolution? Interesting, G9 and GX80 appear to have better details after the downscale, but noise is still stronger than from GH5S at native 10 megapixels. So to answer my own question, yes, it makes sense to buy GH5S for low light when you need to crank up shutter speed to eliminate subject motion blur. Keep in mind your results may vary depending on raw converter, particular scene and your own post-processing skills. Still, the fact is, GH5S has best high ISO performance. Let's check low ISO dynamic range now. This is the image I start out with and this happens after some tweaks. At first they seem the same, but the G9 image is overall darker than the other two. It seems ISO value is not identical on these three cameras and such variations are pretty much usual for all cameras and brands. 100% crops reveal more differences. GX80 shows more noise in shadow areas than the other two cameras. Let's go wild on exposure slider. Whoa, this is interesting. G9 and GH5S reveal strong purple color cast in shadow areas and GH5S even has bending. Is it possible old 16 megapixel sensor is better than the new models? Hold on a second. Purple cast is easily removed and we end up with this. Much better. Look at the noise levels on bottom part below the shelf. G9 is clearly the best and GH5S would be very close if there wasn't bending. But we are not over yet. Notice color rendering on these images. In real life book on the far left is blue. Moby Dick book has two distinct shades. Bright red letters and darker red, almost purple shade around it. Also, the light bulb in this lamp is pure yellow, so this entire scene is completely yellow and very warm in real life. Do you notice differences now? GX80 looks desaturated, there are no distinctions between red letters on the Moby Dick book and blue book is not so blue. GH5S is better, but G9 looks the best in my opinion. 
Before you crucify me in the comment section, I did try different image profiles and a bit different exposure for GX80, which is brighter than the other two cameras. Some changes are visible, but G9 still remains the best one. Custom profiles with color checker or software other than Photoshop's camera RAW might yield even better results for all cameras, but I don't know how many people would bother with that. Anyway, I think it is safe to say G9 produces best results with least amount of post-processing. All of this, of course, applies mostly for extreme cases. In real life under daylight, differences are not that obvious if they even exist. All three cameras produce lovely colors. GH5S is special in this comparison since it is the only one with 14-bit RAW files. There is no file size penalty, so there is no reason not to use it all of the time. And unlike some Sony cameras, 14-bit on GH5S is active all of the time, even with electronic shutter or in burst mode. Right now you can see how it affects shadow recovery. 14-bit is clearly better, with less noise and diminished but not completely eliminated bending. Interestingly, G9 doesn't have 14-bit mode and still it performs slightly better. So what are my final thoughts? In good light, with lower ISO and for non-critical application, it pretty much doesn't matter what camera you use, but you knew that already. For hardcore landscape with tripod or stationary subjects, G9 is the best one, as it has most dynamic range and most resolution using high resolution mode. After resizing, high resolution image is also the best one in terms of noise or actually the lack of it. For all around use, both 16 and 20 megapixel sensors are similarly good. They perform almost identical in low light. 20 megapixel sensor is better in terms of dynamic range and color fidelity though. If you regularly push your images to the limit, it makes sense to upgrade, but otherwise stick to your 16 megapixel Panasonic for the time being. If you shoot moving objects in low light, sports, photojournalism, wildlife, birding and similar, pick the GH5S. It has lowest pixel count, but in terms of high ISO noise is clearly the best one. Do not be averted by bending. It is not strong and appears only in really heavy shadow recovery. If you do that sort of thing all of the time, buy the G9 or at least try to expose your images correctly. With this it is time to end this video. Comment section is open as always for your feedback and please check the ways to support my channel in the description field below the video. Thanks for watching.